Hello and welcome to Decknologies. This is the second installment in our series where we explore all sorts of cool and creative decks. Today I have for you a deck I'm calling Zukov's Advance. I was very much inspired by Zukov's push to Berlin to create an aggressive facing deck that apply pressure to our opponents and create this feeling of pushing hard towards our enemy's base and HQ. And here is my best shot at it. Please note this may not be historically accurate to Zukov's actual push to Berlin. And the first combo I have for you uses the card based on the man himself, Zukov. Now this card reads, draw a random Soviet infantry from your deck, it costs 3 less this turn. What this means is if all our Soviet infantry in the deck cost 3 or less, we can guarantee ourselves a unit that will cost 0 credits to deploy. In this deck itself, our only Soviet infantry are 3k infantry, such as the 42nd rifles or the Cuban Cossacks allowing us to occasionally get one of these out on turn 1. The issue caused by using Zukov this way is that we can't run any early game Soviet infantry. We get around this problem by using early game infantry from other nations such as 99th Infantry Battalion or we use early game Soviet cards that aren't actually infantry such as the T-80 or a mix of different artillery pieces. Now the second group of combos in this deck is how we buff our units. Of course, we have bolster the ranks, Now, this is one of the most effective buff cards currently in the game and has already proven itself to be very, very powerful. We then run Standfast, as this combos really well with bolster the ranks. Reason being, we play Standfast on a unit, increasing its stats as well as increasing its operation cost. We then use our bolster the ranks to buff it again and decrease that previously increased operation cost, giving a unit plus 10 plus 10 and 0 op cost for 6 credits. Our third and final buff card is Supply Shipment. It's a very, very efficient buff and it finds itself right at home in this deck as it can be a reliable buff when we can't find our other combo pieces. Now, what are we going to buff with all this? Well, we have our previously mentioned 40 second rifles, but what we also have, and this is what makes the deck progress well into the late game, is we have three copies of T3485. The reason this card is so strong in this deck is A, it has heavy armor, making all of these buffs go extra far when trading. Then B, it has two operation costs, and what this means is this card synergizes very well with bolster the ranks, since that operation cost is just going to turn into extra stats when we bolster it. And then C, last but not least, the ability that the T-34 has. When targeted by orders, it will draw us extra cards. Reason this is so useful to us is because units that have been buffed become prime targets for orders. If targeted by orders, this would just give us a return on investment and allow us to prosper of what would be an otherwise dire and difficult situation. And here we are in game one. As you can see, I'm up against another Soviet deck. I don't really know what he's running, just that he has Soviets. Pretty good starting hand. We're gonna go ahead and get both the ranks. It's not something we want in our starting hand, we want to draw into it. Zukov is an absolute power play of a turn 1, allows us to get either a 40 second rifles or a Cuban Cossacks in turn 1. And we're going to go ahead and get a 40 second rifles. Now there is an argument for not keeping both of them, since we know we're going to have one. However, I think against Soviets, where they have a lot of cards like Hammer, it's good to keep two of them just to have a backup. Our opponent goes ahead and plays Heroes of the Soviet Union. We're just going to push up that front line and drop the 10th Engineers. The reason we drop the Engineers here is it does allow us to drop Akayusha and hit with it next turn, doing a potential 4 damage to any target. Our opponent goes ahead and drops an 845th Rifles and an Engineers. That's a lot of healing on board, but we do have a lot of damage in this deck and we can definitely deal with it. Now I go ahead and drop the Kyusha and I trade here, just because this prevents him healing too much. I know he gets a lot of health right now, but I just want to take out the unit while we can, because we can take away that health next turn no problem, I just wanted to keep his units away from the board. Now he goes ahead and he hammers our 42nd rifles, and then applies the pressure of a bloody sickle. Fortunately for us, we did keep two of them, so we can just simply drop the other, and then we're just going to go ahead and take away all that healing he previously did. Back down to 20 health, very very nice start for us, 
feeling pretty confident. Unfortunately for us, our opponent does have a Stratton Strike. He also has another of his 845th rifles to heal him. Now there's a couple different ways we could play this. We could simply move up to the front line and drop two 45mm anti-tank guns. Or we could drop a combat engineer, push up and drop an anti-tank gun. Um, or we could even use supply shipment if we wanted to. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop our combo engineers and buff up these guys as we move to the front line and then we're going to drop an anti-tank gun. I know we float one credit here but I do believe that this is the correct way to play it with the info we have. There is an argument for not dropping the combo engineers and using the anti-tank gun instead but I really just wanted to get value out of them and buff up that unit as it moved up. Now our opponent drops a Panzer H, finds himself another sudden strike, unfortunately for us, can take out our anti-tank gun, but not the end of the world. T-34 is a very, very strong card to get, will let us go to the late game very well, especially if we get a bolster the ranks to combo with our standfast. And then we're just going to go ahead and value trade, because our unit does heal itself. He might have like a Kyusha, he might have double bloody sickle. There are ways our unit dies here, but I think it's still the way to go just to try and take advantage of the fact that this unit heals itself every single turn. Our opponent uses bloody sickle, finishes off the engineers he sickled earlier. And he's gonna go ahead and hammer our T-34, but it just replaces itself because it does have that drawability and luckily for us, we have another T-34. We're just gonna go ahead drop that, then we can either hit face or drop our anti-tank gun. We're gonna uh, go with hitting face here because we do have the potential to OTK him just with this absurd amount of buff into a huge damage that we can do out of nowhere. We can in fact make that a 17-17 tank and just lethal him next turn provided he doesn't do any healing or drop any guards. Now he does drop a mortar rifles, preventing us from OTKing him because of course that does give his HQ immunity to damage on our turn. We're just going to go for our orders, use the Night Witches and just use our orders to completely wipe his board and start pressuring face. Once again next turn we can do lethal. We can spend 8 credits to do the standfast bolster supply shipment and then with that 1 credit left over we can hit with our 4-4 four, four, and we can just completely destroy him in one turn. I'm slightly concerned about buffing up my units and not killing him in one big turn because he might have like a naval brigade or some sort of critical hit or hard removal and that would be very very painful. These buffs are very much what we're relying on here and we can't really afford to buff up a unit in this stage of the game and lose it unless it's that T-34 and he uses multiple orders to then draw us. He goes ahead, bloody sickles, give us an extra draw, and gives us a second stand fast, so we can give an absurd amount of bonus stats to any unit. We're gonna go ahead, we've seen that naval come out, we're gonna play double stand fast and then bolster the ranks, and just make this unit an absolute beast. 25-25. He's, he's just under so much pressure here right now. He needs a guard or he needs some hard removal. Or we're just going to one shot him next turn. He's really in a difficult scenario. And he can't even chip away at this guy. Because he's just going to heal himself every single turn. And our opponent drops tractor factories. But these tanks are nothing in comparison to our guy. And he's just screwed. We're just going to do 25 damage in one turn and completely destroy him. Game one to us. And here we go straight into game two. As you can see we're up against the Brits and we don't really know what they're playing. It's probably Brit Air, possibly Brit Control. It might be that weird Brit aggro deck we sometimes see where they try to buff up their units a bunch. But we'll see what we get. Not the best uh, starting hand, but we do get a good money gun. We have some one drops and two drops. We do have that 40 second rifles. Not ideal getting that T-34, but I'm sure we can make this work. Both of the ranks is nice to see as it comes with T-34. Gonna go ahead, take the front line. Now there's an argument for taking the front line and there's an argument for dropping the 99th, but I think personally, I prefer taking the front line and letting us bounce something with that 99th. I don't really wanna drop it without getting the, bou the bounce trigger, but I also don't wanna float two credits on turn two. So I'm just moving up, taking the front line.
he's going to go ahead and play His Majesty's Chosen, signaling to us that he's probably Brick Control. We're just going to go ahead and get our 40 second rifles down. They be a very powerful card to get onto the board at this stage in the game and will allow us to put a lot of pressure onto him. Now our opponent drops commandos, pins our guy. We still don't know what ally nation he is, but it's clear to us now he's a commandos deck. Not much more he could be at this point. We top deck the bloody sickle, perfect cards here. Then we get the Kyusha and we just tickle his face for one. Not a whole lot this turn, but it's just a very, very nice uh, tempo and it just keeps us going through the game. Now our opponent, he's going to have to start finding a solution to these problems. We're getting more and more on the board and he's going to fall further and further behind at this rate. He's going to go ahead and get a second Desert Rats Commando combo and he's just going to snipe a Kyusha. Unfortunate procs there but we can make it work. We drop our combat engineer, we move up take the front line, then we play stand fast on it, make it an enormous unit. We can't really do much with it yet but next turn we can play stand fast on it and would have given it a total of plus 12 plus 10 awesome stats to see on a unit and it's going to put so much pressure onto him he really really needs to find some solutions i think pin is probably his best solution to this unit right now but really he's in a difficult scenario we see him chaining off supply chains usually this would be pretty difficult to play against but just due to the sheer size of our unit we really don't care about this gonna go ahead play both the ranks on our guy, make him an absolutely huge beast and hit face for 16 damage. We're then going to push up our other guys and hit face for one more, saving our 9th knife infantry on the off chance he has a guard, but right now we're putting so much pressure onto him. Pin isn't going to save him from that unit alone, he needs more than that. He plays a night raid, very desperation play, he's in a lot of trouble here. I don't see him getting out of this. And there you go, very very swift game 2, absolutely devastated him, got that awesome bolster combo off. And here we are in the third and final game for this video, as you can see we're up against another Brit deck. Not the worst starting hand I've ever seen, I would prefer to get some better early game. Very much hoping he's not Brit Air. Unfortunately for us, we do have two hammers, so if he is Brunel, we're in a very dire situation. But if he's not, if he's some sort of commando deck or guard deck, it's pretty good. It's clear now that he's a mobilized deck, maybe with some mass heal. We're just going to go ahead and bloody circle that guy, stop it mobilizing, getting out of hand. I do apologize for the FPS drops here, it was in my recording software. There's not much I could have done about it, I'm very sorry about it, and it clears up in uh, about 10 seconds. Clears up now actually, here we go. We're going to drop our 99th Infantry Battalion, just a strong unit to get onto the board. I would rather have some better early game cards, maybe some artillery pieces or our T-80 tank, but this is a good uh, card for the situation we're in nonetheless. Now we're just going to want to go ahead, stop that mobilised unit getting out of hand, we're just going to use a hammer on it now, stop it getting too out of hand. We very much can go late game in this game, because we do have this T-34 bolster combo, so we just need to get to the late game properly without losing too much game control. Now we do have to be careful about how we properly deal with those commandos just because they do one shot any unit we move up. But we do have this anti-tank gun in hand as well so we can uh, potentially get him to trade into our 2-3 baiting him leaving it on one health so I think I'm going to move it up now. Because if we move it up now, he's going to trade, leave his commandos on one health, and then we can use the anti-tank gun to actually finish off his commandos, in theory. We'll see what he does though. He goes ahead, drops airdrop, and moves his guard to the front line. This is a pretty strong play from him, but I do believe that we do have the tools to deal with this, because we do have hammer in hand. Night Witch is a very nice card to see here. We're just going to hammer and trade, take out those guards, and then we can take out one of those mobilized units. It's a shame because we are going to take 4 damage next turn, but there's nothing we can do about that, but it's not that much HP and we can use our Cuban Cossacks to finish off his airdrop guys. Our opponent drops Mosquito, unfortunately for us, finishes off our um, 40 second infantry. 
or 40 second rifles, my apologies. We use Cuban Cossacks, value trade, and then I think we're just going to want to get this anti-tank gun down. Now what this means is if he trades this mosquito into our anti-tank gun, we can actually use uh, from the people to finish that off. We're going to use Bloody Sickle on his mobilized unit, stopping that getting out of hand. And I feel pretty confident in this position I'm in, especially because we have this T-34 in hand. We can definitely go late game here, we just need to keep enough board control and presence in the game where we don't get left behind. Just as planned, our opponent trades into our unit, meaning we can actually just use from the people to finish off his mosquito. We could potentially go for the Kyusha 50-50 of Bloody Sickle, but I think I'd prefer the guaranteed kill. We can then use our Bloody Sickle to finish off the unit in the front line. We can push up and we can drop that anti-tank gun. Putting ourselves in a very, very strong position. We have lots of uh, card advantage and we do have this T-34 and this Kyusha. We can go late game pretty well with this situation. I'm feeling pretty confident at this point in the game. Carpet Bomb, fairly big from our opponent but it only actually takes out two units and he's not putting any pressure on us because this unit only does one damage to face. Gonna go ahead drop our T-34 and we're just going to drop that Poly Bomber because we may as well, it's not doing any good sitting in our hand. I know it's probably just going to die but personally I'm not fast. I think it's fine lowest on my concerns right now. And our opponent actually favours going face over King and the Bomber. He does get our T-34 into carpet bomb range, but luckily for us, he doesn't have a second one yet. We can bolster the ranks, get this guy buffed up, we can use Kyusha and our bomber to finish off that commandos, and we can use our T-34 to trade and push up for free, and uh, we now have a 7-5 heavy armor tank that will draw us cards if he gets orders to kill it in the front line, putting a lot of pressure onto our opponent here. We have this second T-34 in hand, we have another bolster in hand, we're in a really really strong position and this is what I mean by the T-34 allowing us to go late game, they're just so so powerful, they can trade with such good value and they're pretty good against orders because of that draw we'll get from them. Now our opponent goes ahead, takes our Kyusha and hits face, I am concerned about him possibly being able to face raise us because I don't know what's in his hand, so I think we're just going to want to go ahead and take out that kitty. Because those, those are what's pressuring us right now. These are what can hit the face. So we're just going to take out the kitty. We're going to drop the T-34. And I am concerned about him possibly having a carpet bomb and taking out that T-34 in the front line. So I think we're best off just playing a supply shipment and getting it out of that range right now. So you can see now it's got 7 defense. There's no way he can kill that without some sort of direct removal. Maybe like an air power or something which destroys a tank. But even that will give us draw and leave us in a fine scenario. Our opponent drawing, not finding what they're looking for, and I think he realises just how much trouble he's in. And there you go, he just surrenders, because we have this 9-7 in the front line, we have a 5-5, I think he's realised just how bad of a scenario he's in, and that we're just going to kill him over the next couple turns. And there you have it. This has been Zukov's Advance, a deck inspired by history itself. Push onto your enemy's positions and apply pressure to their base as you advance towards victory with this aggressive facing Soviet deck. Thank you all so much for watching, I've been Innocent Bubbles and now the deck code will be in the video description so give the deck a try, be sure to drop a comment letting me know how the deck worked out for you and stick around for future cards content from us at Radiant Gaming. I'll catch you guys next time and good luck out there on the battlefield.